Hello, <laughs> this is Julia. Hi, and that was Aaron, and we are Tro. Just a super quick intro before we jump in to this next new painting. First off, we updated our website. We went through and we made it clear what we're about and what we can do for our customers. We optimized every single page for search engines. And I think that's usually a lot of BS, but I think this time it actually worked. We've actually seen a boost in potential customers. We've had five new commissions from five brand new customers who have never been to the site before. And frankly, that's a lot for us. So take this as a friendly reminder to go through your websites and optimize them if you haven't in a while. And we're certainly not web experts, but if you need any advice, any tips or tricks that we have are yours. And a shout out to Omar at Pencil Subway Art, who makes amazing videos that are really fun, relaxing to watch, and has sent some people our way recently. And also a shout out to our friend Jason at Creation by Jason. If you haven't seen, he did a painting of our Egyptian death mask sculpture that we made a little while ago. And now he's doing a, a painting of our Anubis electric guitar that we just most recently did. And you should check out his page. He's got a lot of great paintings. Um, you can learn a lot. He's a nice guy. That's called a shout out. And now, another one of our systems paintings. This one we worked on together. Systems are abstracted works inspired by blueprints and schematics. This one is inspired by car racing. Specifically, vintage open wheel formula cars. Think of Ferraris zipping through Monaco. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy! <laughs> We always assume that we invented the car, the automobile. We, the Americans. As Americans, we feel like we charged across the open plains on the backs of thoroughbreds, whooping and hollering. Reins tightly gripped in one hand, scrunched cowboy hat waving around in the other. And then, after a bit of other muddy history lessons, Henry Ford gave us steel Mustangs to conquer each traffic light drag strip down Lover's Lane. But we didn't invent the car, the automobile. We were just the first, however, to use an assembly line to drain the souls out of wheels contraptions. As cowboys, I suppose it's only fitting that we were content to sputter around in stagecoach-inspired black boxes down gridwork streets planned with rulers and T-squares, while over in the old country, sporting goggles and leather crash helmets, legendary men were slinging themselves around treacherous mountain trails and sleek and slippery bullet-shaped land rockets. These were not race car drivers. They were called pilots. And then one day, sometime after moonshine, rum runners muscled up their cars and post-war kids stripped the fenders off daddy's old rust bucket, us cowboys finally began growing restless with speeding across dry lake beds and twirling around unimaginative ovals. We finally, truly, went to the races. Now, of course, we all had some small idea of what was going on over there, over where real cars were racing. After all, we'd been buying affordable knockoff Italian styling for years. Every uninspired sedan striving towards the near-perfect proportions of the Flamania. And even those glorious tail fins, as American as Coca-Cola, those are transplanted directly from the Fiat Delfina. Over here, we were sold on the concept of bodies shaped like the airliners of modern technology, bolted to heavy ladder-shaped frames with four wheels crudely screwed on. Just heavy slabs of steel shoved along by clattering, over-boosted power plants, explosively shoving white-knuckled rebels down endlessly straight freeways. We sold that as a lifestyle. We sold this cowboy fashion to the thrill-seekers who are satisfied feeling a bit of whoosh in their face. Because if you can't manage an elegant glide around a mountain pass or a delicate swoop through a tight gorge, well then it's best to just hold on tight and thunder through the straightaways. 
grab that wheel, cowboy, and use every bit of your vast driving talents to keep the nose pointed forward. Having trouble double clutching before a turn, just a bit too clumsy to heel and toe through the hairpins, no matter, buckaroo, you can still impress your compadres by smashing the accelerator to the floor as hard as you can. It's the pedal on the right, by the way. If you can't go fast, well then you gotta add more chrome. Slap on a couple of eagle stickers. Be loud. And when you can't be loud, then bolt a fin on the back and glue the letters G and T on the side. Hold the reins tight with your right hand and wave your crumpled cap around on the other while whooping and hollering. We sold cowboy fashion. The Italians, they sold cars. Just enough of them so that they could keep building race cars to play with. Us? Well, we weren't really interested in building race cars. We built things that looked like race cars. But we were really building commercials to create excitement, to sell family station wagons with Italian-style tail fins. And when we, as well-weathered, tough-as-leather cowboys, finally went to the races, we'd never seen anything like it. These Italians, they felt the road. Every bit of gravel telegraphing up through carefully crafted steering mechanisms. Each crack in the ancient roadways, shuddering through seats designed with function over form. They'd drag their hand along the pavement if they could. Taste the asphalt. Predict tomorrow's weather forecast by the scent of today's Petro. Each vehicle carefully made bespoke for each individual pilot. Hand rolling the sheet metal as skillfully as a high plains drifter might roll a cigarette back home. Fast talking, fast moving, slick and slippery bastards who, with distinguished sophistication, rewrite the rules of gravity, momentum, and drag as they slip through the countryside and tight city streets on unseen rails devoid of friction or resistance. I have to tip my hat to the lot of them. I can't say there's anything more impressive on pavement than an Italian piloting an Italian automobile. But, I mean, uh, well, I do suppose that there are the Germans. Sometimes you just don't like how a project is going. Crash and burn. <laughs> Sometimes you go into a bit of artwork with a very specific idea, even as weird as it sounds, if it's just a feeling. We wanted a certain feeling out of this painting. We wanted it to reflect layers of work, like the building of a race car, the planning and shaping and tuning and tweaking that goes into it. We wanted, well, when you look at a Formula One car from across the way or on television, it's one thing. It's bright colors, it's obvious curves, it's aerodynamics. These are all one thing from a distant perspective. Even the sound, it's just a screech that zings past. But you move closer and that sound changes to a hum. Closer yet and you can start to pick out the whir of moving parts, the subtle valve lifter ticks. Scratches in the paint, a rough edge hand sanded for a bit of extra smoothness just before the green flag. We wanted that feeling from this painting. Across the room, it's an obvious abstracted figure that could easily be an ornament on the long hood of a British roadster. But you have a pit pass. You can get close enough to see the work. The hand-penciled lines of napkin blueprints, the plotting and planning, the scheming, the layers. We went into this race with the wrong set of gears. It happens in racing and it happens in art. You become focused on a certain thing, a low gear package to conquer turn three, or trying to add too many car shapes to a painting that is only supposed to be inspired by racing. We're not doing a painting of a car. We could paint a car if we wanted. If you wanted a red Lamborghini painting for your college dorm room in 1985, well, we could definitely handle that. But we're doing a vintage Formula Car-inspired painting. Maybe for that same kid from 1985 whose tastes have grown a bit more refined. So we wipe, and we scrape, and we expose, and we reveal. Because teacher says we need to show our work. Inspired by racing. By the grit under the glamour. The filthy oil gleaming with metallic shavings of machinery pushed through its limits. Rubber and asphalt molten to the point of powder, vignetting the edges of sexy curves and delicate lines designed to slice through heavy oceanside air. Canvas holding as taut as aluminum riveted to cold steel as greasy hands wiped desperately at well-earned grime for a glimpse at the prize lying down the long, twisting track. This piece ignored all yellow flags and powered through to overtake itself through the final straightaway, inspired by racing. This piece is tuned to turn heads. This painting has finished the race. <laughs>